Welcome back, everybody. We're going to continue on with the fabulous Lee Colbert. Here I'm already feeling less clueless, Kim. Hey, we're talking about drawing programs. And yes. the neat thing is uh, about these, Lee, is that really it doesn't really matter which drawing programs they're using. The more expensive they are, mm -hmm. the more tools they have, the more yes. complicated they are. But I really don't need all those tools. And most And they kind of scare me anyway. Right. So. And so you might want to create buttons. or I mean, you know, who knows? I mean, it's fun to be creative. Mm -hmm. And if you can be creative for free, like you can with uh, the Open Office uh, Draw program that mm -hmm. we're showing today, all the better, right? Yes, definitely. And if nothing else, you can actually learn some of the basic fundamentals. We're going to go through those as we kind of kind of continue here. Okay. So good. we'll uh, take a look at our little composition that we began. Now we have our um, our shape. Remember, we punched a hole through that. Yes. And then we copied and pasted this picture on here. But what's the problem, Lee? Uh, the picture doesn't fit in the frame. Well, that's one. And okay. and do you typically put the pictures on the outside of your frames? No. No, we right. need to put the, the picture, we need to arrange them. Yes, properly. okay. All right, yes. so that's what okay. we're after. Okay. And it's very easy, and again, most programs are this way. I'm going to right click. So on do the we picture. need to we need to rework the frame or are we rework the picture? Well, we can picture? go either way. We can either bring the frame to the front okay. or we can send the picture to the back. All right. So I clicked on the picture and I'm going to send it to the back. Oh. Okay. Now it's behind my frame and I can finish things up by just, again, since these are just mathematical objects. It's just a simple matter oh, wow. of arranging Very it. So nice. now I've got a now I've got a little frame here. So now you actually have two objects. I do. You've got the frame and, and I've got the two picture. kinds of objects, and that's the important thing because um, remember the, the rectangles, the shapes are are what we call vector or mathematical objects. Mm -hmm. um, bitmaps, like a photograph, are actually uh, mapped out just like the name says. Bitmap. Every tiny little pixel has uh, been given a position and a color value. Okay. So there's still math involved. Uh -huh. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> so but it's a different kind of math. Are we basically talking about a picture and a shape? Yes. Okay, well, you're t getting a little too geeky for this show. Oh. I know this is my first time on the show. I know. But I'll take control here. Okay, I'm okay. sorry. All right, go ahead. All right, so what have we forgotten to do, Lee? We forgot to save this. <laughs> we got this great composition. Let's save this baby here, okay? Pixels and File vectors. And save. And you guys don't I need know, to know all you're that right, stuff. I'm right, I'm right. You're right, Lee. Of course you're right. I always say that. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go ahead and save this file because we want to keep our... We want to keep our working file mm -hmm. uh, saved. So, yes. uh, and we want to remember where we save it. That is always an issue for me. Right. And it's not that the computer ate your pick, uh, your file, typically, is it? That's what people say. Oh, the computer ate my, uh, computer ate yes. my file. Because the computer does not have a personality of its own. No. <laughs> Sadly. And it remembers where you, it only remembers where it, you it only rem put it. Where right. you put it, what you told it to do. Right. right. Now, so I've got my frame here. Now, let's take a look at a couple other things. I've got, um, it's blue, lovely. Uh, <laughs> what if we want to make it turquoise? Well, gee, that's hard. What if we wanted... I think you um, need a designer with I, you. You do? Yeah. You think I need some kind of other fill? Well, well I think you need somebody who's color-coordinated. Ah, I see. Well, what if we go... No, it's, it's fine. It's, 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 it's well, yeah. What do Why we would you to? use invisible? Well, why make it if no one can see it? I don't know. Maybe you want to just turn it off so while you're while you're working on it. Maybe it's a complicated, um, you know, shape okay. or something, and what it, you what want to see the you want to see the outline, but you don't want to actually see. Now here's a good example. I don't have my whole picture centered in there, so by going to a vi invisible, I can make sure that my picture really fits within my frame okay. a little better. Okay? Is invisible the same as transparent? It is not. What okay. it, basically what it's doing here is just hiding. That fill. If I go back and oh, I and okay. I switch my fill color, now I got to be able to select it. Okay, so it changes. It's contextual, right? Is that too geeky? Uh, that's okay. Yeah, it changes it and it tells me that it's invisible. And I want to actually make it back to color. And so you might have to move me. the other there one. There we go. And I've got okay. it. I've got it set to invisible. How about a gradient? Now, gradients. What gradients allow me to do is mix color. Oh, so for my nice. frame, maybe oh, I nice. want to have a yeah. mixture of colors. And can you modify the colors within that? Most programs will allow you to do that. I don't know if this but one But since does. we haven't used this one, we yeah, don't know we the don't answer We don't really to know that. the answer to that. <laughs> but I would imagine, my guess would be, you use something like a, a, a paint bucket tool. You look mm -hmm. for a little icon that looks like a paint bucket. And you can typically, oh, there's a paint bucket tool right there. So you can typically change oh, look at that. gradients nice. by going to the paint bucket. So maybe okay. I want to make a change to this one, mm -hmm. all right, I can do that. And there are lots of other options here. And again, we don't really have time to go into all of them. Right, but, right. but even though this is a free program, it's mm -hmm. got a lot of the same kind of features that you would find in something a little more advanced. I can even go into a bitmap frame here. 
And maybe I want to use something like a picture of a, um, oh, I don't know. How about something like that? Oh, very nice. Yeah, and that's not bad, is it? Yeah. Now, the other kind of things that you would typically want to do in a drawing program now are, are going to be looking at effects. Things like drop shadows and gradients and those kind of things would all be in that area. How about if we find, if we see a style here, and I have no idea what we're going to find on this screen, but let's see if we see something that looks like. What's a style, Ken? While you're looking, can you tell us? Well, a style would be something, let's imagine that you've created that frame now, and you want to use that frame over and over again. You want to use okay. the colors. So it's sort of like cloning? The line values. Oh, it's, it's mm, yeah, I'm not sure exactly. Uh, it, it, styles in a word processor work the same way. Okay. Basically, it's, it's, it allows you to save all the, the, um, the attributes of the item that you've created. Okay. So if I wanted to create another um, um, picture frame with exactly the same colors, um, I could do that by creating a style. Oh, okay. And then so I, I do that in my style. photo um, editing software, sure, actually. Sure. If I if I change to black and white and make it a little fuzzier and a little right. brighter, I can save those changes. I didn't realize those were called styles. Yeah, okay. well, they, and again, they, these are things that, dip, that change from one program to another. So you might see them in different places. Uh, and I am actually looking I've for... seen it in Word, but I never knew what it was. Right. Well, now, now you go. Now you're no longer clueless. There you go. Now what I'm looking this for is styles. Works. Come on, Styles, where are you? Not Styles, I'm looking for effects. Because I want a drop shadow. I kind of have a drop shadow. So, but a drop shadow is, is uh, unique to this particular program? Well, no, you'd see drop shadows in a lot of different places mm -hmm. like this. But uh, I'm, I'm not going to stumble through. Okay. Uh, basically, the idea of a drop shadow is obviously it just kind of gives you that sort of effect there. Kind of a 3D effect? Yeah, 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 exactly. Looks now, more there's professional some other, sometimes, Right, there's some right? other nice tools here. Now, again, there are different tools that you can choose. Down at the bottom of the screen, maybe you want to just do um, some stars. Maybe you want to make, you know, something that really grabs somebody's mm -hmm. attention. Maybe I want to so do. So this a, could sort of be an advertisement. This could be your background, and you could put a star, could be like fifty percent off. Sure, or, sure. You know. So let's go ahead and maybe uh, a greeting card. Let's do a nice star here, a nice five-pointed star, and I want to get somebody's attention with this. And obviously, we don't want to use that boring blue. Let's go to something a little more exciting, maybe a maybe a magenta. Nice. And Matching I can the flowers nicely. right, and I can use my um, I can use my text tool now in the middle of this. Oh, very nice. And uh, let's say I want to say bye now. And now it jumped to the middle of the um, shape because right, you because had the it shape selected. Was already selected. Okay, exactly. Now I just double click on this shape, mm -hmm. and then I can start changing the properties of the shape. Maybe I want to make it a little bit bigger. Now, again, these are all things that I, I'm kind of just figuring this out as I go, and it's not because I'm brilliant necessarily. Oh, I think it is. It's because you get used to working with computers. You get comfortable with using computers, and you kind of are able to figure these things right, out on right. your own. Yeah, the buttons are similar. They I are. see the, they are. the font, uh, the, the font uh, changes there. You've got bold. You've got right. italic. I've got uh, spell check. I've got bold. Yeah. I don't see a Paragraph color for styles. value for this. So let's see. Oh, I think that's it there. Maybe if you, oh, there we go. That's the font so color. So there's my font color. I obviously, I want something in a light color okay. so it stands out against my. Color. And all the buttons across the top, you've got file, edit, view. So I can take that Very here, common. and I bet I can even scale this down, and the text of the star will scale. The text will not. Okay. So, uh, so you'd have very, to make the text a little very smaller. Easy. So when we come back from the second, next segment, we're going to talk about exporting and saving. Okay. All right, because uh, we're still working in, in uh, open office. Mm -hmm. We want to be able to use this maybe in Microsoft Office or PowerPoint or somewhere mm -hmm. else. Or somewhere okay? else, yeah. So we'll talk about that in the next segment. We'll wrap things up with Viewer Mail. Let's wrap it up.